My name is Juni, and uh, first of all, thank you for investing your time and being uh, with me. Basically, this is probably the only time in history that this group is together in the same place, isn't it? I'm going to talk about um, sonar systems. I know that you all guys, you, you probably use LiDAR systems much more than sonar systems, but let's get to it. Formula One. Red Bull, they're probably and most arguably the, the most successful uh, Formula One team at the moment. Uh, well, it being in Germany, there are other, uh, other brands and other uh, uh, car manufacturers as well, but uh, at the moment it's, it's probably Red Bull. But Red Bull, they are not only known for uh, Formula One and the Formula One team, they're also known for all sorts of other strange uh, sports. They support a lot of a lot of sports, and they take something that is relatively normal and put it a little bit to the extreme, don't they? So they take jumping into water and then move it uh, 38 meters up in the air, and suddenly it's a Red Bull sport. It's a Red Bull thing. So they take uh, events that we can all do, you and I, there are professionals in the middle, and then there are the crazy uh, people uh, doing Red Bull stuff out on the, on the left, on the right, sorry. Um, and we sort of see ourselves, Norbit, uh, as, as the Red Bull of the multi-beam industry. We, we see the commodity, we see a lot of professionals, really, really good uh, manufacturers, and then we have us, and we see ourselves as the, 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 the ones who pushes the limit a little bit, who, who make smaller systems, more uh, power-efficient systems. But... Um, I know that I work in subsea, I work in, in underwater construction, and I work for the sonar manufacturer. I know that most of you guys, you work with uh, probably terrestrial lasers, static lasers, and all that stuff. So this is maybe a little bit outside our con uh, combined comfort zone. But let's not make that, uh, that uh, into any sort of problem. This is what you're used to seeing, and this is what I'm used to seeing. And I'm going to use a lot of pretty pictures combined with a, a special technique um, to, to sort of push you guys into selecting Norbit when you move from onshore uh, surveying to nearshore and offshore surveying. All right, so what can we use uh, a sonar system for when we talk about uh, offshore, uh, sorry, uh, when we talk about constructions and um, and monitoring, and this is what this is the kind of images that you would get out of a, a multi-beam sonar system. We see uh, underwater features that we've never seen before. Sometimes I use the analogy that when you go from being onshore to go offshore and use multi-beam systems, it's like it's like going from a swim hole, the normal swim hole, and then take your goggles out to the Solomon Islands, dip your head into the water, and suddenly you see a completely different world. You see fish that you've never seen before. Here we see uh, underwater constructions and underwater features that we've never seen before. And that's what we're going to uh, see a, a number of different, um, very nice images of. Right in front of this fortress, you can see, you can see dredge marks, you can see scour marks from, uh, from a dredger. Very often used, uh, they very often use multi-beam systems. So you hope you notice my technique that I'm going to print Norbit into your head. So when you suddenly think about going offshore or nearshore, Norbit is the, the that, that's my takeaway from today. I hope you're right with that. It's not, it's not uh, hypnosis, not really. All right, here we see a key wall, a steel sheet piling key wall that has been mapped with a multi-beam system. Perfectly fine, everything looks good. But if it doesn't look good, it looks something like this. So this is a, a bulbous from a, a, a container ship that penetrated into a steel sheet piling. This is the kind, of, uh, um, the kind of damages you can see. And this is actually from a German harbor, um, a very big German harbor. I'm not going to say which one, but a very big one, probably the biggest. Um, and this was mapped with a, with a Norbit system. So how do we do this? So we take our sensors. And we basically show everything and make everything available in real time. We take our multi-beam sensor, we take our uh, 
GPS slash inertial navigation system, and we take our um, at, uh, we feed everything into a data acquisition software. That data acquisition software displays everything in real time in 3D. Obviously, we can process data afterwards. We just heard about some velocity profilers. There could be navigation improvements. All that can be done post. But in real time, you see everything like, like this. This is an example from a real time um, image. We went to Paris. We did some um, mapping of the Seine in Paris. Uh, together with a, a partner, SBG, SBG Systems. And uh, these are some of the uh, very pretty uh, pictures from the Seine. And suddenly we see uh, rocky outcrops showing that we never thought it was there. I mean, I personally just thought it was a sandy uh, riverbed, but it's obviously uh, rocky outcrops. We can even see some man-made structures down on the, on the lower right here. So this is uh, the Seine River in a small uh, video clip. Beautiful data. So all, all, all these uh, things, they have been sort of harbor, um, river, re relatively shallow water. Um, and the closer you are to your features, the easier it is to see details. So I'm guessing the Seine was probably 8 to 12 meters of water, maybe a little bit shallower some places. This is in about 30 meters of water, 25 to 30 meters of water, and we still get a really um, in incredible um, level of detail uh, if, you, if we've set everything up nicely and correctly. And so this is a wreck off Scotland in 30 meters of water. And I hope you agree with me that we see uh, an, an amazing level of details. So these are, this is two runs, one run on either side, and then it's just uh, put together. Obviously processed a little bit, uh, but, but basically a, a raw data set. So uh, a couple of examples of, um, of from, from customers. Here we have uh, a, a, a collapsed key wall. And you can, you can see that the key wall has collapsed, but you can also see the, 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 uh, the sediment and the, uh, the debris in the water we wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to see that. So now with a multi-beam system, pass by once, and you can, uh, you can estimate or you can also calculate how much you need to take away. Half of this could have been uh, taken away by the current, right, and moved to other places. But now we know what, this, what the world looks like underwater. Another example of customers using our systems for uh, scour protection. Well, not scour protection, but finding out where do we need to put rocks so we don't see scouring uh, around bridge piles. And you can see that uh, this example, we have uh, scouring happening uh, after this, uh, this pile. We don't typically see uh, a lot of um, structure, uh, so the, pi the pilings themselves being mapped uh, with our systems. Uh, it, it does happen, but it's especially the, the, the features around the piles. Another example of, uh, of something going on, subsea, uh, a key wall, uh, piles, uh, but you can see in front of that key wall, in front of that dock, there's a trench having, uh, being built up. I don't know why it happened, but we can certainly see there's something uh, that doesn't look, uh, doesn't look right. So the last couple of examples is, um, is pipelines. Pipelines are widely mapped in the offshore industry using both our and our competitor s s systems. Um, and the level of detail, this is in about six meters of water, the level of detail or six meter flying height, the level of detail is amazing. So this is from a lake in Amsterdam um, where we have two pipelines, but unlike normal pipelines, these two, they actually cross over. So someone didn't do that job right, uh, but we can certainly, uh, identify the, the, the mistake here. It's an old pipeline. It's not being used anymore, I've been told. But nonetheless. Um, and in, in fact, actually, they, they, they made this mistake twice. So they cross over and then cross back. So that's a little bit unusual. But it, it looks super nice uh, when we both in real time and in, in post. So this is, um, this is the last slide. This is uh, a couple of cars uh, we mapped during the um, a demonstration during Oceanology International over in London. So inside the docks of uh, London, we found these two cars. They're not there anymore. Uh, the top one is a Ford Taunus, and the other one is a BMW. 
And we know that because one of our customers recently used his Norbit system to find out where they were, and then they've, uh, they've been recovered. So this may be the last, well, last but one survey of these two cars. So that's a shame. But it looks, this is the level of detail you will see from a, a high-quality multi-beam system. And with that, I'm not going to... I'm not going to try to pick your brains anymore with the Norbit uh, information. Um, but I think I am at 11 minutes, so I still have time for a few questions, if there are any. <laughs>